Good morning. Welcome to our celebration today of the first Sunday in Lent. Please take a moment to turn off um, any cell phones or electronic devices, please, and stand and greet your neighbors. Our gathering song today is number 401, number 401, Tree of Life. Please sing with us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Lent. Let us begin our celebration with a sign of our faith in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. First Sunday of Lent. Every year, the same gospel, in a sense, because three different authors are writing the same account of Jesus being in the desert, being tempted by the devil. And they're always at the very beginning of the season of land, this sets the tone for entire six weeks. That's what we hear today. But also other stories that are for us to ponder upon for the season of land. So as we begin, let us ask the Lord for his uh, gift of the Holy Spirit, that we can understand them, that we can put them into practice, and also that they will inspire us to greater love and service to the Lord through prayer, service, and the acts of charity, and also fasting. Let us pause for a moment, ask for God's grace. I confess to so my God, God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have, have greatly sinned. sinned in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through, through, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and 
sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyria Aleisa. Kyria Aleisa. Krista Aleisa. Krista Aleisa. Kyria Aleisa. Kyria Aleisa. Let us pray. Grand Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Land, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I would like to invite the little lambs to please come forward. This is it? No more? No more little lambs? Going once, twice. I think they are all sleeping. Or oh, perhaps coming from the vacation. That's, that's what happened. That all of our schools are on the vacation uh, the, the, this past week. And they're probably coming back. But I'm very happy to see you. So here is uh, the brothers and sisters. Isn't that wonderful? Two brothers, two sisters. Question for you. Uh, do you remember what happened on Ash Wednesday? What did we do on Ash Wednesday? We put ash crosses of ashes on our forehead. Okay. Uh, how come I don't see any ashes on your forehead? <laughs> we washed away? Yes, my, uh, Michael? We. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we, we took a shower and, uh, and the ashes are gone. But it's not about ashes, is it? It's about our hearts. Yeah, it's about our hearts. That our hearts are being marked with the, with the sign of the cross that we can be a better people. So, um, uh, prayer, fasting, and charity are the three different things that we embark on the, during the season. But we always do something special for the season of Lent when we are giving up something. So, will you share with us what you have given up for the season of Lent? Okay. Sweets. Sweets. How about you? Girl? Mm. Drawing. Okay. And Marisa? Playing ball. Playing ball. Michael, what did you give up for Lent? Sweets. Sweets. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that will be all good for your teeth and all good for uh, for the... So mom will contain the energy of two of you. Oh, you can see this. So may God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who is going to be the shepherd today? Michael, you want to be a shepherd? Okay. Okay. You know what to do. May God bless you. Thank you, Bella. Thank you, ladies, for looking up. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And I need to say this because I don't think that I have ever said this. Parents, do you know where the children are going? <laughs> There is no secret dungeon anywhere in the parish. We've got a beautifully renovated, at least we try, beautifully renovated parish hall. And then we've got a secret passage through the back of that hall. And that's where our, your children are going. Going to the parish hall with the two children to look after them so that you know where they're going, okay? We don't take them anywhere else. We go to parish hall with a little gospel for the little ones. So thank you. This is a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden 
in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. And the serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? And the woman answered the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some of the fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading response is not found in the book, but the response is, create in me O oh Lord, a new heart, create in me a new heart. Please sing with us. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world. 
and through sin, death, and thus death, came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For if by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to the very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And and he said to him, All these I shall give to you, if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. It's written, the Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 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 to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Happy Lent, everyone. Happy Lent, and uh, I want to welcome all, all of you to this first Sunday of, uh, of Lent, especially those who are joining us for the first time, perhaps, here at St. Clair, and all of those who are joining us through our live broadcast uh, that, um, that we, every Sunday, uh, all Masses are being given and produced by the wonderful people of St. Clair, 
We're joining these cameras, we're riding around and showing the faces. So anyone that is sleeping, you show to the world. All the, everything is recorded. Uh, so uh, let's stay awake on this first Sunday of, uh, of Lent. We started our journey of Lent on Wednesday with ashes. I hope also that you took advantage and equipped yourself with some of the Lenten companions. We had the black book. We, had, we still have a few um, issues of the word among us or other electronic possibilities. Sister Kathy is going to tell us about some of the project that our parish is embarking on at the, later on at the end of the Mass. And perhaps you have made the decision to support and be involved in one of the many Christian service projects in the parish or beyond in our family of parishes. That our parish bulletin last week had all the things that are available for us to journey during the season. And as we move from one Sunday to the next during the season, the church invites us to look at the biblical stories that we hear, take them to our daily doings, daily livings. It, it is like taking these stories as lenses that will help us to make sense of our lives, of the world that we live in, but also to find the truth about ourselves and what is out there that we can do to build up the kingdom of God. What are we made of? What is God calling us? On Ash Wednesday and uh, Ash Wednesday readings and also this Sunday readings offer excellent chance to continue down the path to find out about our identity, find out what God is calling us, find out where we can respond. Really, these two, Ash Wednesday and this Sunday, uh, tell the truth about ourselves, about our an identity, and how are we to live in this world with both honesty, integrity, and hope. Here, during these readings, but also what I would say, all the readings through the season of Lent, they will talk about the truth of God. We hear about the beautiful encounters with God. We hear about God's doing, God's caring, renewing, and rebuilding about God who is showing the way, the truth, and the life. And also, we hear the truth about ourselves. And that's what we start today, the first reading, the story of the fall of Adam and Eve. It is one of the most iconic and perhaps well-known passages from the scripture. And we, here at St. Clair, are blessed. We've got a mural right here. Blessed the people on this side who always see this story of creation, possibilities, and maybe are not so blessed. This group of people who are looking at the judgment and right here. But this story, what that's the today. Every uh, once in a while when, they hear, when we hear the story of creation, I go here and I spend a little bit of time glancing on this wall. What is out there in this that the artists in 1953 put that on that wall? What is there? Here he is, Adam and Eve, living lives of peace, blessings, plenty in the garden created by God. The God that garden gives them to enjoy, to take care. And yet, amazing things in this paradise devil is being present. How did he find a way to the, to, the, to, the, to, to the garden? How did devil found his way to paradise? And the devil, what he puts it there and questions our trust in God, the creator, questions the identity of the people that God created and questions as well what God is distorting his word. As we know that when, when we hear the first reading, when the people are adding few things that God never said about it, that's how we do. But you know, this is what I was thinking looking at this mirror. Sister Kathy and I joined the religious community. We thought we joining the paradise. And very quickly we learned, ah, 
It's not a paradise. We come to the church, to the parish community. Many of you have joined St. Clair community and you think it's paradise. And we quickly learn it's not a paradise. Two people are st standing in front of the altar. They pledge the love for each other. They create a paradise. It's going to be right there. And very quickly they learn, ah, marriage is not a paradise. It's beautiful out there. And to each one of them, Somehow, somewhere, devil creeps in. With the temptation, is this really the truth about God? Is God's word really truthful? Is God really putting us on an equal thing? Is God really showing us our dignity, our identity? You know, the same is about our church, church in general. A paradise. God is present. Seven sacraments here. God encounters with us. Paradise when we come and God forgives our sins. Paradise when God comes and joins the two people in love. God, a paradise when the people come and, and pledge their love for each other, ask for a healing. And yet, we all know the devil creeps in, but abuse but many sins of the people of the church, those ordained and not ordained. How does it happen? How does it happen? And we all know the rest of the story of this mural as well, the original sin, the consequences. And later we hear in the second reading that, that was given to us today, another Bible story of God, the new Adam, of Mary and new Eve, they're going to restore everything new, making all things new. God is going to repair, renew, rebuild everything because God wants to be close to us. These stories we will hear, they will describe the action of God in restoring what was destroyed, but also will tell the stories of us that there's so much fear of approaching God. There's so much unknown and so much that we created our own images of God and God wants to say, no, that's not the image that I am produce, I'm giving you. Here is the true image of God. God who wants to sit by the well. God who wants to join by the roadside. God who wants to be at the empty tomb. God who wants to be at the cross of our sufferings, of our tragedies. That's the true the image of God. Not the distorted that our ego, selfishness, and pride, and devil wants to show us. These are the stories that we're going to hear. At the heart of the gospel story today is, of course, is Jesus Christ. A God who is being tempted. Tempted by the words of the tempter who says, is God really trustworthy? And the same, the question of the identity. If you are son of God, if you are just like we are being tempted. If you are a child of God, if you are a God's creation, if you are husband and wife, if you are father and mother, if you are daughter and son, if you are the dreadful Eve calls Jesus' relationship to his father into question and suggests that now, if you're not, if I put into question and you have doubt, you can create it your own, with your own power, with your imagination. You can create your own on your own terms. And we know how many people have created their image of God on their own terms, created their own church on their own terms, created their own relationships on their own terms, created their own identity on their own terms. So the first Sunday of land, we learned that the key to the, uh, resisting this temptation of the devil is by finding identity, our identity, and our relationship with God. That's the, this weekend, we've got three baptisms in our parish. Yesterday, two, and today at 11 o'clock, there will be another. What do we do at the baptism? The God infuses in us identity of a child of God. From now on, you are my son, my child, my daughter. 
so that we do not give in to the temptations and pressures and, and desires of so on of Adam and, and Eve to define ourselves in terms of what we have, what we do, the power we possess, but rather who we are as God's creation. And if God created, we heard this last Sunday, don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? And if the temple is there that God creates, you have no power to destroy it. Who gave you the right to destroy what God had built? And I think that's the, that's the thing of today that the, the tempter wants to destroy what God has created, what God had given us, this paradise, this wonderful thing. At the same time, it is important to recognize that the temptation is not going to be only once. Yeah? Temptation came when Jesus was at the Olive Garden. Temptation came when Jesus was on the cross. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross, and we will believe in you. You know? And also, I think it is in our lives, too, that our baptism doesn't erase our temptations. We'll be tempted today. We'll be tempted tomorrow. We'll be tempted 10 years from now. We'll be tempted 20 years from now. Because our being the child of God does not eliminate doubt, fear, need, the desire, sin, or sense of being restless. Rather, points us, where do we find community when we can lift each other up, when we can attend to the needs of each other, where we can find our relationship with God, that we can come to God and, and hear the words, I forgive you, I love you, you are mine. That's where we come here. Look at our parish, the funeral of the unknown person, a recent tragedy of the, of the university, ministries within our parish, sickness, struggles, all orient us towards God and the community. That family that lost those three children couldn't cope with, without the community and without God. They all come. They all point at those consequences of our sin or consequences of this choices points us toward God to restore what we have dis destroyed and also point us to the community to come together. The consequences of this choice was the two brothers who were starting to kill each other and mom and dad had to come to it again and they gave birth to another child. An amazing thing that then the first and the last never kill each other, somehow find a way, how do we do this as a community? And gave the beginning of the, of the next nation and so on and so forth. My friends, Ash Wednesday reminded us that we fall short in claiming our God's given identity. We mark our foreheads by the, by the ashes as a challenge, not to put us down, never, but to lift us up so that we can wear, uh, put, uh, when we can uh, have our heads up and minds and hearts towards new hope, new life, new beginning. Isn't that what we're going to hear next Sunday when we climb with Jesus to the top of the mountain? All the following Sunday when we join Jesus at the well with the Samaritan women? Or the next Sunday when we go and by the roadside met the blind person? And when Jesus opens our eyes to, to see better, or the following Sunday, to be with two sisters at the death of the brother and hear the word come out, step into the light. All in all of these is the invitation to new life. And that's what we do during the season of land. Approaching, challenging, receiving new life. Therefore, when we fall short, my friends, we can confess our falling and trust in and through the Paschal mystery of Jesus Christ that we have promise of forgiveness and a new life and we can start all over again. And for sure, prayer, fasting, almsgiving is going to help us. So here you have, in a nutshell, six, six weeks of the season of land. The old picture right in front of you, triptych of life here in the center is always Jesus Christ. And all will also us who are at the foot of the cross, who are at this tree of life, who are there as well on this side. May the Lord inspire us for the season of land with a wonderful response, with a wonderful challenge, but also with a wonderful gift of ourselves to others. Amen?
stand and profess our faith, and um, our creed can be found in the red cover books on the front cover. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Jesus taught us to live on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. So we look to God to satisfy our every hunger. For the church, that during this season of penitence, we may repent of the sins we have committed and atone for those wrongs throughout our Lord. Let us pr pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may resist the temptations of power, greed, privilege, and remain committed to serving their people through their position. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for the Easter sacraments, may they find guidance, comfort, and truth in the word of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To those whom winter means suffering, who are homeless, to those without adequate heat and food, and those who must spend much of their days outside, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those entrapped by human trafficking will be rescued. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that this week we, as the Parish of St. Clair, pray and act on behalf of the world community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who become children of God this weekend, Lucy Stone Pierre, Gloria Francis Pierre, Nicasio Daniel Ayers, and Eileen Rose Adkins, and their families, may we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and hospitalized, may they feel in the, the healing power of Christ and find comfort and hope in his constant presence. Especially we pray for Michael Campbell. And we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those whom this Mass is offered, Don Birschback and Dolores Arsenault, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, after your son resisted temptation in the desert, you sent angels to minister to him. Strengthen us in our resistance to temptation. Send angels to minister to us as we ourselves minister to those in need. Through your son, Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please join us now as we sing number 615, number 615, my song will be for you.
Pray, my friend, <coughs> my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all the Holy Church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining for a day longs from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might possess over, at last, the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. With you, sir. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my room, but only a say the word and I shall be
Please join us now as we sing number 823, number 823, Gather in Your Name.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word that proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Sister Kathy has a very important project to propose. First of all, for the announcements, uh, please be sure to join us this Thursday, March 2nd at 6.30 for our cafe, Catholic Adult Formation and Education Gathering, a Lenten call to serve with Richard Lang, Richard Lane's insp inspirational presentation. Flyers are in the pews and they're also in the back of church. Please take them home and consider being here on Thursday. There's a bottle drive for pregnancy aid takes place for the next couple of weeks with final returns due March 11th and 12th. Bottles are on the tables in the church. For all activities, see the bulletin. Not to put an extra burden on anybody, but as a parish project, there were nails at the entrances when you came in. Jesus died on the cross and we helped to put him there. By our sins, we helped to put him there but he did it because he loved us so much and he loved every person in the world. Good, bad, red, white, blue, no matter what, he loved each of us. And so I'm, what I'm asking of us as a parish is to take a nail, put it on your table to help you remember this week we'd like to pray for the world. Pray for some situation in the world and do some act to make the world a better place. Big, small, little, I put a prayer in the bulletin and I put some suggestions of things that could be done. Take the nail. If you remember to do it, bring it back next week and we're gonna put them on the burlap sack here. And this burlap sack should be overflowing because we are helping to rebuild the world. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Sister, where are the na nails at the, around the church? They're around the church. Okay, and you have some extra if we need? I have extras. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, the, uh, two weeks ago, we welcomed into our parish a new project as well, which is the youth group that wants to be created within our family of parishes. And I'd like to invite Elise uh, to please come forward. She is here with her husband, who is at the back with a little child, uh, Nick uh, Herman. So please do come and say a few words. Hi, my name is Elise Herman, and I'm part of this parish, a family of parishes as the youth minister at St. Paul in the Lake Catholic Church. And I can honestly say that having a relationship with God and choosing to be his disciple has been the best decision I've ever made in my life. And I can also honestly say that being in youth group when I was in high school played a major role in making this decision to follow God and living the abundant life. I remember in high school when I met other teens at youth group, I noticed that they were different. And it wasn't that they were like just nice, but they were joyful. Like they lived their life with meaning. And most importantly, they wanted to know God and they wanted to live a life of abundant faith. To any of you high schoolers listening to me now, I wonder, do you know that you're made for an abundant life? Do you know that you were created to become a saint? At St. Paul Youth Group, we are here to walk alongside of you in discovering this abundant life and this plan that God has for you. I'd like to invite any 8th through 12th graders here at St. Clair to consider joining us at Youth Group. We have games, prizes, food, talks, small group, and prayer. We meet twice a month on Sundays from 7 to 9 at St. Paul on the Lake Catholic School. So check the upcoming bulletins for a schedule. Also, I'll be in the back with my husband and the baby who's yelling back there. Um, if, you, if you want a schedule or if, you want, if you're a parent or grandparent who wants to learn more, and we have a newsletter sign up. Um, and then if you would like to help also, um, come talk to us. Thank you. God bless. Thanks, Father. Thank you, 
it is a, a very important uh, a project uh, here within our family of parishes to gather the young people so that they have the group where they can develop the relationship with the Lord, but also with each other to support each other. As we live in a very challenging world, whether it will be in the high school or in the community, as we um, all know, uh, th there is need for good support group. And I think the youth group can be one, one of those. I believe there will be all the announcements. Yes, sister, anything else? Sister turned 80 this past week, so why, why don't we give her... The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, trust in the hell of Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a blessed Lent and a blessed Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And please join us now as we sing number 852, number 852, Ashes. <laughs>